So obviously the amygdala plays mm -hmm. a big role in how we remember, but apparently we also have, uh, there's also a huge role for the hippocampus, which is spatial, amygdala being more emotional. Am I right thus far? Sure. Okay, yeah. that's all I have. <laughs> yeah. So um, and we want to talk about the role of the hippocampus, which is truly fascinating. You might have heard about this recent best-selling book called Moonwalking with Einstein, which talks about people who are uh, specialists in uh, remembering stuff, memory champs, they're called. It was written by Joshua Four, who couldn't be here tonight, but he uh, did tape something for us, which I want to show you, and then we're going to get into the hippocampus. Check it out. The kind folks at the World Science Festival have very generously given me a list of 150 random words that they want me to memorize. And I'm going to do that by using an ancient technique that was invented in the 5th century BC called the Memory Palace. And the idea is I'm going to create wild, crazy images of the words on this list and tie them to a space in my mind. So the first word on the list is science. So I'm going to imagine right here uh, Albert Einstein sitting on my shoulders and slapping my cheeks. That should be totally memorable. The second word on the list is heart. So I'm actually going to imagine a gigantic beating bloody heart and I'm going to just impale it on this sundial. I don't think I'm going to forget that. All right, so the third word on the list is speech. So I think I'm going to imagine Colin Firth from the King's Speech uh, stuttering right here. That'll be memorable. The next word on the list is green pepper. So I'm going to see a rotting, stinking green pepper right here in this bush. Error. University. T-shirt. Violence. Chicken. Nation. Football. Photo. The final word, which is tool. At this bamboo fence, I'm going to see a gigantic monkey wrench just embedded in the fence. Whew. That's it. All right. Now that I've remembered all these words, I'm going to go distract myself for a few minutes and then come back and see if I can still remember the list. 3.14159. Wilson, Harding, just 535. Uh, that's as far as I can go. So it's recall time. Uh, let's see. The first word was science, then heart, speech, error, university, t shirt, violence. Fry, children, mathematician, legend, television, year, day, famous, Egypt, gorgeous, Gorton, convent, sky, gossip, match, color percent, president, robo, dream, Kennedy, holiday, Is instant, real website, newspaper, a car, unspeakable, a crack, asylum, hat, last, housewife, family, total, total, agent, hat, hat, eggs, football, photo, tool. <laughs> Len, explain that to us. <laughs> sure. So the, 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 he made a reference to the fact that this, this had been invented or discovered in the 5th century BC. So the actual story goes like this, and I th think we have enough time for me to go a little bit off script. We can cheat. Um, so uh, Simonides, who was the Greek p person who discovered this, was at a party in a big building and was called out. And when he was called out, the entire building collapsed and everybody was demolished. And the survivors were interested in, re in identifying who was the remains, so to speak. And he reconstructed who was sitting where by remembering where they were sitting. And it was on the basis of, of his doing that that he understood that remembering things on the basis of spatial location works pretty well. So he then invented this method called the method of loci as a way, as a memory tool. And this, this method was then picked up in the Middle Ages by, uh, by, by rhetoricians and by individuals who, who had to have good memories. It, 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 and they created memory palaces of the sort that, that, uh, that Joshua just described. And, and they used this as a way of remembering sequences of things, speeches they had to give, oral narratives, and all those things. And, it, and at that time, nobody really understood, you know, why did this work so well? But what came in this century, we had the work that Dan referred to with this patient HM who had damage to the hippocampus uh, that caused big memory deficits. And then about 10 or 15 years later, a fellow named John O'Keefe, who I worked with, discovered that in the rat hippocampus, the individual neurons, some of which Todd was showing you, that those neurons respond most effectively to where the animal is located in space so that they, in the rat, it appeared that the hippocampus was interested in space. 
And then there was a big problem for the field. How do you put those two together? And so why is, why is it the case that a brain system that is so important for memory is also so important for space? And so the, the answer, if there is an answer yet, and actually this is still somewhat unclear, the answer is that we, we probably use this kind of spatial framework as a way of remembering the episodes of our life. They all happen in a particular location. That's why the spatial context was so important in the experiments we did on the reconsolidation that I described before, so that there is some very deep connection between the way we remember things and, we, and the spaces in which those things occur. And we use a spatial scaffold, as it were, to help us remember the events of our life. In the, Josh's book, he sort of posits that we evolved this way because we had to remember the way to the clearing where we killed the mastodon. No, and, no, absolutely. Uh, I mean, so that, so our ability to, to sort of, for, I mean, there's, there's a lot of interesting connections here. First of all, being lost in space is a profoundly terrifying thing. We all really want to know where we are. If you come out of the subway and you, you know, you suddenly don't know where you are, you, it, it, it's a very anxiety provoking. So, so knowing where you are in space is pretty important precisely because if you don't know where you are, you may be in danger. So knowing how to get to the safest place, knowing how to get to food, knowing how to find water, knowing where, the, where your mate might be and so on, all those things are evolutionarily extremely important. And, and the circuits that are crucial for this kind of spatial knowledge that are linked with memory go way back in evolution. I mean, you can trace them back three, 400 million years. So this kind of ability, the, the need to know how to get around in space and how to find your, your way in space is fundamental to, to, for any moving organism. So we'll leave plants out of the equation for the moment. But for animals, it's an absolutely crucial ability. And it somehow got integrated into or became a basis for our ability to remember the episodes of our life in, in a way that turns out to be very effective. And so memory tricksters use it, but, but it's not a trick. It's actually the way the mind and the brain seem to work.